There are two primary ways of communicating with beings of higher consciousness. One is through astral projection, where you leave your physical body and communicate to them in person. As much as I'd love to break into astral travel right now, we have to save that for later. The other method involves having a being come to Earth and communicate through a trained person, and this is called channeling. Channeling is a natural form of communication between humans and beings of higher consciousness, included but not limited to angelic beings, spirits of nature, non-physical entities, or even animals and pets. In a sense, it's basically when a human will turn him or herself into kind of like a phone for beings of higher consciousness and people to communicate. A channeler can choose who or what they want to channel. As long as the other party has an interest in communicating, the link is made and the channeling can begin. Now don't worry, there's no possession or anything harmful taking place here. The body is still under the complete control of the channeler. But the channeler and spirit are communicating through thought. Messages are communicated on levels of emotion and thought rather than spoken word. The channeler will then decipher what the spirit tells him into human language. Contrary to popular belief, entities do not generally use human languages because it is considered awkward and clumsy. The majority of this message is conveyed through an elegant series of sensory feelings. Let's talk about animal communication because this is a form of channeling that you yourself can do. Channeling pets is one of the easiest forms of this art. Pets, of course, do not use human language, but they have a strong desire to communicate with humans. A small disclaimer, if you're planning on trying this, it's also helpful to charge your third eye chakra, as we talked about in lesson two. It will assist with your mental connection to them. You'll want to practice on a family pet before taking a leap to anything else. A cat or dog who is familiar with you is the best choice to begin. Cats are a tad more difficult because they tend to pick and choose what they want to listen to. A family dog can be easier as they are pack animals and will be more apt to tune in to the leader of the pack, which is you. So let's go over some of the basic steps to do this. Start by taking your dog into a quiet room. Sit on the floor next to him, or if he's allowed on the couch or bed, have him sit next to you. Pet him in his favorite spot until he's settled in. Then start talking quietly to him in a loving tone. Find one short sentence or word and use it over and over. You could say, hey there sweetie, hey there sweetie, or okay buddy, okay buddy. Let's just call this your key phrase. When you've gone over your key phrase 10 times or so, close your eyes and be silent. Stop petting him and begin to form a picture in your mind of what you want him to know. You may have to practice visualizations if you haven't ever done this before. After the picture is formed and clear, float the image out of your forehead where your third eye is located and into your dog's head directly between the eyes. Once you've done this, speak the key phrase again one more time and float the image again into his head. Keep doing this until he either leaves to get up or puts his head on your lap. If he leaves, follow him and do it again. If you begin to get a reaction from him, like putting his head in your lap or something else, congratulations, you've just communicated with your dog. Cats are a bit more stubborn, so it'll depend on the cat you're trying to communicate with. The image you're visualizing to him may have to be their favorite cat treat or something that they really like. If they're especially loving snuggle cats, then that's all the better. Use the same directions with the dog though, and who knows, you could be talking with them in no time. If you have smaller animals like avians and reptiles, you have to remember that the animal has a smaller brain. The reception of pictures is apt to be slower and take longer. Remember, practice and patience is crucial to learning to do this. You'll probably start with minimal results, but if you're persistent, you will not only master the family pet chat, but other animals around you, like your friend's pets or pets in the car barking at you as you walk by and so on. One big question that everyone has around now, well, do they talk back? Yeah, they do. I communicate with my cat, Toonie, and he always tells me what he wants, whether it's food, water, or to go outside. I've actually read that horses are really good at communication as well. In an article I'll be posting in the comments of this video, a woman said that one time she had a horse specifically ask for a green apple, not a red one, had to be green. Of course, she immediately got one and gave it to her, and they started communicating more. I know what you're probably thinking. Well, don't I have to be psychic to do this? Well, yes, but everyone is psychic, but most people don't really realize it. There's a gland in the brain called the pineal gland, which scientists have actually labeled the psychic gland. Through charging your third eye chakra, you begin to activate the pineal gland and your psychic connection can begin. Just remember to release the concept that you'll hear words and allow yourself to feel into your animal friend. So now we understand how to channel beings of lower consciousness, animals. For beings of higher consciousness, it's essentially the same thing, only reversed. In this scenario, we are like the animal and we are communicating with beings who know and understand far more than we do. There are a plethora of channelings on the web that you can find. Some are really helpful, enlightening, and perceptive, and others are, well, not. It's important that when you're listening to or reading channelings, that you use discernment with what you're listening to. For the most part, you have no idea who or what is being channeled, and the only way you can really truly tell is through listening to what they are saying and finding truth in their words. If what is being said feels right, then go with that flow. If it does not, then you don't have to subject yourself to it. The final decision will have to come from you, though. Everyone channels differently as well. Sometimes channelings are quite boring, as the channeler will just lay down and connect internally and just let the information fly. Other times, the connection between the beings is stronger, and they'll walk around the room and talk and be quite lively. Then there's people like this. As has been often said, you are shifting. 
your frequencies from one reality level to another, and this is so. But you are always shifting. You are shifting now. It is a natural thing that you do. You don't have to wait to shift. You've been shifting. You've been shifting all your lives. This is the way motion is created. This is what happens when you create the illusion of movement. The only way to create the illusion of movement is to actually shift from parallel reality to parallel reality that's slightly different than the reality you were in before. So you're shifting now, you're shifting now, you're shifting now, you're shifting now, you're shifting now. Through constant, constant, constantly shifting parallel realities. The idea is that you don't notice this so much because each new reality you shift to is very similar to the one you were existing in before. The idea of noticing the change is to create there to be a bigger difference between the parallel reality you shift to and the one that you were in before. That's when you know you're shifting. That's when you reveal to yourselves that you're always constantly shifting and that learning to shift is not something you have to do. You do it automatically. You do it by your own second nature. It is natural to you to shift. This is the nature of how reality works. This is the nature of how change exists. So the question is not, can you shift? The question is, what will you shift to? And how different will you allow the shift to be based on your definitions and your belief systems of what you believe is possible for you? And this is why it is of paramount importance, as has been said this day, for you to really focus on the idea of the frequency, the vibrational frequency, the state of being that you prefer your reality to be, and thus then understand, based on what we have just said about shifting to parallel Earth realities, that when you change the vibration of your being, it's not that you change the world. It's that you take yourself, you shift yourself to a parallel Earth already existing on the vibratory level you have created within yourself. Now, I gotta admit, that's actually pretty cool. And regardless of the excitement in the way he channels, the information is usually really good. For those who are trying to channel entities on your own, I ask that you use caution when proceeding forward, but also have fun. There is a possibility that you encounter a negative entity who may try and trick you or steer you off course. For the most part, even the bad entities will act as good ones, because humans generally fall for it. I don't want to scare anyone away from this though. The universe is full of amazing, positive beings of light who are here to help us in our time of need. If you connect with a being that just fills you up with love and light inside, then feel free to establish a conscious connection and communicate with this being. Syrians and Pleiadians especially are known for being very loving and helpful. Syrians come from Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. The Pleiadians come from the Pleiades, which is a cluster of stars through the constellation of Taurus. To learn more about this, I recommend reading the book Bringers of the Dawn, or listening to the audiobook, which is available on YouTube. A lot of the information in spirit science does actually come from channeling. A man named Drunvalo Melchizedek was visited by a being named Thoth, roughly 30 years ago, and worked with him personally for many years. We're going to be learning a lot about Thoth, who was the priest king of Atlantis for a very long time. He wrote about all of his experiences in the Emerald Tablets, which are ancient, unbreakable tablets which we discuss in Lesson 12. The whole Atlantis story came from him. I highly recommend, for those who are interested in learning more, check out The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, the first book Drunvalo published about his experiences with Thoth, as well as 25 years of scientific research that works harmonically with what Thoth taught him. There's actually a being channeled named Cryon of Magnetic Service. He talks a lot about worldly events and what's going on on a global scale. What's interesting is that Cryon has been invited to the United Nations seven times over the last 13 years. If the UN listens to channeling, maybe it deserves a little more credibility than we realize. On my YouTube, I'm going to be posting small snippets from various channels, but most of them from Crimson Circle. Crimson Circle started out in 1999 when a being named Tobias started communicating with Jeffrey Hope. There's actually a really cool story here, I can't go over all of the details, but Tobias was actually written about in the Bible, in the book of Tobit. This particular book was removed by the church in 1546 during the Council of Trent. Tobias was written as one of the main characters in that book, and Jeffrey and him began communicating more. In 1999, Crimson Circle was formed, a group dedicated to communicating with Tobias and other spirits. Up until recently, it was mostly Tobias who was channeled by the Crimson Council. Tobias then said that he wanted to return to Earth and live another lifetime because he missed physical reality and said his goodbyes. Today, Adamus St. Germain is channeled instead, and he's very lively. A little insight on Adamus, he is what you would call an Ascended Master. An Ascended Master is someone who underwent a process of spiritual transformation and moved into higher states of being beyond physical life. This will make way more sense in future lessons. Okay, I want to wrap up by going over a short list of definitions. During the channelings, you may hear some words that you're not familiar with. Amyo is absolute and pure trust in the self, the realization of the I am. 
makyo are kind of like lies that you tell yourself that take you away from the I am, like I'm not good enough or I can't do it yet. Kind of like the opposite of amyo. Ascension is the process of going from one lifetime to the next while staying in the same physical body. Kaldra, you may hear this one a lot actually. Kaldra is the nickname that Tobias gave to Jeffrey. So if you ever hear Jeffrey say during a channeling, Kaldra doesn't want me to say this, but I will anyways. That's Adamus speaking through Jeffrey about Jeffrey, whose nickname is Kaldra. Is that confusing? Shambra is the name that Adamus uses for the group of humans going through the awakening process. If you're watching the videos, you too are a Shambra. Shoud is a channeling, essentially. What you'll be watching are Shouds, gatherings for communication with Adamus and other beings. But yes, my dear Kata, love, ah, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing you get so caught in it, so hurt by it, so uh, deep into it. But for the most part, very, very few humans know what it's like to love themselves. They tolerate themselves. They, they, <laughs> they, they have an awkward relationship with themselves, and they're, they're still looking for love and still creating love with other people. But you know what, what's going to happen in this planet? I'm, I'm digressing, but I love to digress. What's going to happen on this planet is this planet has created love, shared love, and, and been in love. What happens next on this planet that's never been done anywhere else in all of creation is for the very beings who came here to start loving themselves. It's the next frontier. It's the next evolution. It's the next, uh, uh, it's the next uh, spiral, but a spiral that – Oh my! No barkers? Oh! Not that I'm so demanding. Run, a simple run. cup of coffee, a, a marker, is all I need to keep me happy. So you could say that your experiences have been like a big spiral, and continuing to expand, continuing to experience and, and, and to share all that. But funny thing happens at a certain point in this awakening that you're going through. The spiral comes back into itself, and then you would have to create a hologram – you can't write it on the board like this – but you go through um, like a, a doorway, a doorway into yourself. And you're never going to be alone in there because you found yourself, uh, but you have an intimate understanding of everything and everyone else when you fall in love with yourself. Well, that wraps this one up. Happy channeling! Nothing like the sun to keep you from stumbling in the dark. Thought I once or twice you figure out where you gotta start. All the scars have filled my heart with rain.